Hello there and welcome back DIYers. Today we're going digital. That's right, we're upgrading this DeWalt DW734 to a digital thickness gauge. And at the end of the video, we're going to measure just how accurate this is with my digital calipers. So let me show you just how DIY easy this is. And this is an older uh, model here. This is the DW734. But first I thought we'd at least try and see just how accurate this is and then we can compare it to the new digital. So how we're going to test this is I've got a block of wood here and my uh, digital caliper 128 of an inch under three. So I think what we'll do is we'll take it through this direction. My my current uh, scale reads out in 30 seconds. So I'm going to set this at a 30 second of an inch under three. So it'll be 32 or 31, 30 seconds and run this through and we'll measure and see how accurate it is. So first I'll eyeball this down to three and 31, 30 seconds. You can't see it very well, but then you have to push this bar down. It locks it in so this doesn't move. I'll turn my vacuum on and we'll run it through and see what we get. Turn on my caliper here. It's supposed to be two and 31, 30 seconds. And I got 125 out of 128. So I'm a 128 of an inch off just by eyeballing. Not bad. So what I got here is this easy planar precision DRO, which means DRO's digital readout um, from eye gauging. I actually got it from uh, Chips Fly and I'll leave a link down below um, for where you can go get it. This uh, video, by the way, isn't sponsored by DeWalt or Chips Fly or by eye gauging, but uh, I saw this and thought, well, this would be really good. So comes with your digital readout caliper. It slides along this little groove, if you will. And with this, it's going to hook to the planer. I've got a multitude of brackets and metric screws. Uh, I got some metric um, Allen wrenches here to help out. It's also got a stick on uh, ruler you can put on after you're done. So let's get started. This here is the bracket that'll go on the machine. And you put this double washer over and then these four millimeter Allen wrench screws. And then this little bracket here you put on and put these little uh, screws here you can loosen them up so it slides. That's how you'll set it. This here will slide over like that. I got these big six millimeter screw that goes in there and a nut to fasten it on tight. And then from there you start calibrating. So as the first part of the instructions say, uh, like I say, the pictures all in here are the 735, but I called and talked to uh, Chips Fly and they actually said it should work for the 734. From what I can see, it looks like it's going to, but we're going to remove old style measuring bar first. Point of no return. Well, not really. I could put this back and set this and play with it and realign it if I wanted. So we'll take these screws off. I got a number two Phillips. So I wound up uh, off camera here, spraying these with some penetrating oil and actually had to use my impact driver to break them loose so I could get them out. They aren't rusted, but they were well in there. All right. So say this amount here, got this double washer and these four millimeter screw nuts. So they're kind of tight, they're not real tight, but they're tight enough everything stays. So next is we put the gauge itself on. So this little hex nut goes in here. This cord, by the way, you can plug it into an external battery source if you want, but it comes with uh, you know, little hearing aid batteries. Okay, so off camera, I took and got this mounted like I wanted. And basically what that means is, is I got it plumb or plumb this direction and set this way 
to where when this goes on here, it sits well within where it needs to. So I tightened these up. They say not to, but I went ahead and tightened those up really good. Plum. And I might be off a sixth, maybe a thirty-second of a bubble, but if you watch this channel any, you know how OCD I am. It took me about ten minutes to get this like I wanted, but it's dead on plum. So what we have to do next is there's these little spacers here, and they have to go on the back because this is going to want to hit on that. So with this spacer, it takes it off of there so it'll sit and they're stick on. I think that's great. The only problem is, is up here it's not going to matter, but down here it's going to wind up sticking on my um, tape measure. And I'm a little worried that when I go to take this off, it's going to rip that with it. But uh, I may not pull the sticky off on this side and just stick it to the caliper, but I will up here so that it'll stick there because I gotta have it. Because the only thing that's holding this on is these sticky pads and a bolt down here. And that's not enough once this thing's going, it's gonna rock and roll. So um, again, off camera, I took painstaking time to figure out where to put these um, so I could stick them on. And so I got little marks over here. So let's get these put on. Okay, so I cleaned these actually, I didn't have any alcohol what I have is, is brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is just acetone. So I clean this off with acetone and then stuck these on here. And baby, they are stuck good. So now here's the tricky part. So I'm gonna have to get this put on here and then peel these off. But like I say, I'm only gonna peel the top one off because you see that one's gonna stick there and it's probably gonna pull that off. I have to take it off and I don't want to. So I'm just gonna have it stick up here. So. This is going to be the tricky part. You got to put this nut inside that groove. And you got to get this in this hole. And the two to line up. And that groove keeps that screw or that nut from turning. It's not very tight. I can move this in and out. Next part. Is getting this stuck and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to pull the back of this off and I'm gonna have to be dead on straight before I stick it and I'm gonna do that with my little torpedo level here and actually before I get started let me just clean that off real quick note to self acetone melts plastic let's get this off Torpedo level on. Slide this back. So I'm within the bubble. I'm out maybe at most a sixteenth. So I've tightened this up. Now let's see. Undo that and let's see. And I had this turned all the way down to zero. Let's just see how it slides and goes up and down. So the next part, calibration. Okay, so we've got it set and what I found out is, is if I, you gotta leave it in calibration mode so it knows where you're at. If you put it in INC mode, which is incremental, it sets it to zero. So what that tells you is if you move it up or down, it tells you how much you're moving it down. So uh, I ran uh, that same board through um, widthwise and got it to 2 and 15 sixteenths. So what I'm going to do is take that down to 2 and 7 eighths. We'll run it through and see how close we are. So uh, if we're at 15 sixteenths, I need to go down another sixteenth. So that should say 1 sixteenth over here. That's a 64th. 32nd. Sixteenth. So if I take it back to calibration, it should say two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths it is. So we'll run this through and see what we measure at. Again, it's going to be a little noisy. Take this out to two. 
seven eighths and see what we get. Two and seven eighths right there. Take it to the center. Two and seven eighths. Take it to the end. Two and seven eighths. So it's dead on accurate. Well, there you have it. The eye gauging easy planar precision DRO. Told you it was DIY easy. Now a couple things I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video as far as the specs go is it'll go from a zero to six inches. It's accurate within one thousandth of an inch. It'll measure in decimals of an inch, millimeters, as you see me use it in a fraction of an inch. Now if you happen to look at the picture on the box you'll notice it's not the 734 for which I put it on. This is actually labeled at the website for the 735, the 13-inch uh, DeWalt planer. But as you see, I was able to put it on my 12 and a half inch uh, 734. And I'll leave a link down below to this particular model and the 12 and a half inch planer and the 13-inch planer if you want to look at both of those. As you can see, when I set it up, I was dead on accurate. Now, remember back in the beginning of the video when I did it uh, with the old system, I was off by one 128th of an inch, which is about 0 .0078 um, thousandths of an inch off, which, you know, some of you might argue, well, that's pretty close. And you're right, it is. But what you got to realize is, is it took me a lot longer to get that eyeball that accurate than it did to set this up. With that, I think this is a well-intended upgrade. So if you've happened to have used this model on either the 12 and a half or the 13 inch planer, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how easy it was to put in and how well it worked out for you. Or if you happen to use this particular model or any model on any type of planner, uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you used and how well it went. And as always, subscribe, hit the like button, get your DIY merchandise. And until next time, happy DIY.